Okay, so we continue with the backward pass. We understood the forward pass. Uh, backward pass is not much different, actually. Uh, when we talk about, uh, talked about quantization aware training in the previous weeks, we have uh, gone over the pseudo code of uh, backward uh, quantized training. This is backward binary quantized training, when, and it's not much different, guys. So, um, what we're going to do is, we're going to cover this backward pass pseudo code. Before that, let's remember some variable names. So, C is the cost function, like L the loss function or the cost function. L is the number of layers. SK is the activations before the batch normalization. So SK is the activations here. So AK is the activations after batch normalization. So the activa AK is the activations here. So binarize, binarize is the signal function. You remember this. And ABK is the binarized way of AK or GAB is the binarized of GA. So how do we do this? Guys, it's very simple. What we do is, for each layer, except the last layer, we apply straight through binarization, uh, straight through um, estimator of the gradient. So gradients are passed using this straight through estimator, which was, as we talked about, the straight through estimator here, guys. Some of the gradient pa being passed straight through, depending on the value of the activation of that layer. So activation of that layer, the input to that layer. If it is bounded within minus 1 and plus 1, you let the gradients in. If it is not, you stop the gradients. So that it will stop gradient, it will stop the um, uh, gradient explosion problem as well. So we don't vanish the gradients and we don't make the gradients explode as well. So after that, you do the backward pass for the batch normalization, which is also a layer because you have this layer and you have to do back propagation as well. Then after that you have binarized weights and you have them. Yeah, and you just do this. But at this point, at this point, you have to update the weights because you have calculated the gradient for AK. Okay? Uh, imagine uh, we have updated the weights. I'm going to show how you update the weights, but after you update them, you just multiply the gradient with the weights and you calculate the new gradients and you have back propagation being continued and the gradient passing to the next one. So how do we update the weights? But before that, be careful. Although we have these values here, the gradients are never binarized because they are very small values. That's why we don't have any B superscript here. Gradients are never binary. We keep them non-binary. So using non-binary gradients, we are updating the weights. How do we update the weights? We get the weights, we update them using the learning rate. So nu is the learning rate, lambda is the drop rate, and ak is the binarized version of ab is the binarized version of ak. We update the weights using the gradients. So be careful. The activations and weights are binarized in the forward pass. As you can see, B superscript and B superscript on weights and actuations. But in the backward pass, when the gradients are accumulated, they are not binarized. So we are binarizing the outputs. So in the end, we will have binary activations and binary weights when we want to do the inference forward pass. But during the training, we let the gradients be single precision as well. So it is like you are doing this training on a uh, GPU desktop. Uh, computer, when the training is comp uh, complete, you put this network for inference in an uh, embedded system with only binary weights and actuations. So be careful, the gradients during the update of the weights are never binary. That's why the weights are kept non-binary as well, but they are binarized during forward pass. So that's the idea, guys. When you do this operation, you know how to write the backward and forward passes. You can create the binary layer for binary training. And some libraries has already has this capability. But any framework can be appended to BNN training ability, just like I said in one of the previous slides and previous videos. Just do it for MATLAB Toolbox and train your own binary network. Just feed it to an embedded system. You can. There's nothing stopping you. It's not that complicated, guys. Difficult to converge, but you can train them.
with this method. So it is fine. I guess you understood how binary training is done. And thanks to my master student, Barish, and one of your stu uh, friends in the class, he is he's working on binary uh, neural networks for on uh, their implementation on FPGAs, and he has found nice links for me. Uh, I wanted to share them with you. These are some embedded platform system on chip designs, like Ping of uh, Zinc of Xilinx and Ping of uh, um, um, a partner company. If you're interested, here are some links. Just visit them. I think you are going to like them. Uh, there are some cheap. Um, devices like Pink, which, which in, on which you can uh, dr directly implement uh, binary neural networks um, uh, using Python. So you write your codes in Python, you train your network in Python using PyTorch in binary form, and you directly deploy it. And they work. They are very nice papers, actually. So there, you can find some examples they have done in this links that Barish has found us. So this is Ping community. Zinc was a device from Xilinx, and Ping is like Python Zinc. So uh, Python productivity on Zinc is called it's called Ping, and they have many nice projects. You can download them. They have GitHub code repositories available for use of video processing or uh, anything. So accelerated OpenCV image filtering libraries. So for object detection, they are very nice libraries. They, there are very nice codes you can use. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much. We have covered binary networks. We have four weeks left. In the three weeks, I'm going to be providing slides, but for the final week, I will ask you guys for the presentations. So I hope you're working on them. I'm not saying that the presentations will be four weeks later. We can just postpone it a bit, but like five weeks, six weeks later, we will be doing the presentations and most probably the exams by the end of May. So uh, work on your projects, guys. Try to be prepared. Okay, thank you. See you.